Welcome back, dear viewers. Um, uh, Fruf planting has direct influence on thermal ease and energy preservation in and around buildings. Roof planting is a strategy that can be a beneficial solution in, uh, of course, the diverse climates to decrease energy utilization in buildings and also in enriching the um, potentials in architecture, presentation of buildings and for enhancing the built environment and increasing the investment opportunity. It helps to tackle the, sto uh, the storage of green space in numerous areas and delivers the city with open spaces that aid ease heat effect and offers human population with a, uh, with a very important outside by applying roof uh, planning and planting rather which can improve quality of life as an effective uh, to tool for sustainable development goals represented in social economic and environment uh, factors. Dear viewers, in this context, we have with us a very special guest, which is Abdullah Taufi. He is the co-founder of Urban Green Roofs Specialists in Egypt. And uh, a very good day, um, Abdullah. And it's a pleasure to meet you and have you with us. Pleasure with this uh, new concept, a new idea, which is really um, interesting and uh, we're happy to discuss today. Pleasure is mine. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Abdullah. So when did you start to get interested in roof planting and why? Uh, actually, originally, I'm an architect. I'm not an agriculture engineer. And um, uh, the idea came when I started to realize that our city is lacking green spaces. And um, I decided to start and find solutions for the lack of green spaces. How can we provide our city with such uh, intervention? Because it's very important. And um, since we have lots of houses stacked together uh, in, in Cairo and the, 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 the existing urban fabric doesn't uh, allow for green spaces to be integrated, so the idea was to jump up on the roof and plant uh, our roofs. Um, the transformation happened for me when I was an architect and then I traveled to Germany to do my master's. And then my thesis, my master's thesis focused on uh, rooftop gardening for Cairo's informal settlements. Um, Cairo settlements are the spaces that lack lots of planning and planning of course uh, integrated in it uh, green spaces um, i think um, informal settlements um, require lots of attention and require lots of intervention and that's where my master thesis focused on so i um, i decided that we have to work on providing those spaces with uh, an idea to add green spaces and the only available space space for them was uh, on the roof that's where the idea of uh, rooftop gardening started for me. I, um, I worked for uh, two years at the American University in Cairo. Um, I, uh, I worked with, uh, research, uh, on research and development and implementation of rooftop gardening in, in informal settlements. So I linked between theory and practice. Um, and uh, currently I co-founded Urban Greens Egypt. It's a startup uh, that aims to promote the concept of uh, urban gardening and rooftop gardening uh, in the city of Cairo. Um, and I'm trying as much as possible to, to spread this idea because of the multi-benefits that it has on the community. Wonderful. Okay, um, where, Abdullah, where are the um, uh, main uh, places that you worked on and planted uh, first? Um, we try as much as possible to focus on areas that lack green spaces. So uh, in Cairo, uh, we have this issue a lot in informal areas. So we try as much as possible to plant on the roofs of informal settlements. And of course, we have to think of the social aspect. So we have to uh, provide those people with um, uh, an incentive. So uh, it's not only about greening the roof, but we can connect this to food production. And uh, this is the, 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 the good thing about uh, rooftop gardening. You can uh, have a multi-benefit from it. It's not only providing green spaces for ledger, but at the same time, you can provide people with um, an opportunity to increase their economic uh, inputs. So they can have uh, a rooftop garden that can produce a decent amount of uh, vegetables and leafy crops, and they can use it for their own consumption. So at this, the, at this moment, they are uh, self-sufficient from specific types of products, so they don't have to go to the market and buy it. And at the same time, if they have surplus, like there, is, there are different systems that they can provide, that can provide this with intensive production, where they can um, have an extra uh, uh, production, where they can sell it for people, so they can gain also an income from that. So we focus as much as possible on uh, informal areas. Yes. So how do you get the roof ready for planting? 
as roofs are usually full of unwanted things. And as you mentioned, uh, there is the social aspect here. How do you get uh, to convince people that this is for their own interests? And, and tell us about some of the difficulties that you must have faced mm. and the resistance that you must have mm. faced. Definitely. Um, I think uh, a very important point is to make sure that the space is good for planting, is ready to be uh, planted. And this requires, we have a checklist. Whenever we go to a space, we make sure that this space, first of all, is accessible, that you can enter to the space. Yeah. This is very basic information. Uh, the second point is that we have to make sure that the roof is insulated because you're working with plants and water and sometimes you can have an issue yeah. on if the water um, dissipates uh, inside, I mean, into exactly. apartments. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, the, 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 so the the most important point is to make sure that the roof is uh, ready for uh, receiving such uh, systems. Um, also, you have to make sure that there is a water source on the roof. Because, of course, if you have uh, plants, you want to water the plants every day. And if you don't have a sustainable source of water at your roof, probably you will face challenges in daily maintenance of your plants. So uh, um, an existing uh, uh, watering uh, tap is, should be on the roof. Um, also, we have to make sure that there is an ample amount of sun because plants require proper sun in order to grow. So uh, you have to make so, uh, sure that there is no lots of obstruction from uh, around buildings uh, so that there is proper uh, exposure for light for the plants to properly grow. Um, and also we have to make sure that there is an existing uh, structural engineer that can support you in making sure that the loads that you are adding on the roof are safe. This is also a very important point um, because the load bearing of the roof, sometimes you put extra load and it can have a problem. So you have also to make sure that the systems you provide uh, is uh, well equipped and suitable for, for the roof uh, structure. Um, I would add the challenges that we faced. We faced lots of challenges, actually, especially when we work in the informal context. But um, I would say sometimes you have to climb 11 or 12 floors without an elevator available. And this, of course, when you have to move up lots of materials up to this uh, roof, it takes a lot of effort. Um, also, an important point is the safety of people. So you, if you're planning to plant the roof, you have to make sure that there is and enough uh, parapet where people can stay in the roof without being compromised by any kind of danger because you're planning to have this roof as a space and at the same time you have to make sure that this space is safe for everyone. Abdullah, are there um, plants that are more successful in roof planting than other plants? Um, yes, actually uh, on the roof you can grow any type of uh, vegetables um, and some fruits. So basically, uh, any leafy crops, any herbs, uh, uh, any s some vine crops as well. Uh, but the roof does not work well with uh, normal trees, as you can see, because um, trees requires a lot, lots of weights, and uh, requires lots of space for the roots to grow. And the roof does not provide uh, this. So um, some people they um, they provide trees, but they have to prune it properly so that it, it gets smaller, it gets like a bonsai tree. But this is also something that can be done. But uh, in general, any kind of vegetables can grow very well on the roof. Uh, some fruits like strawberries can also uh, work well. Uh, any types of herbs, medicinal herbs works very well. Flowers as well is uh, something that you can uh, plant. Okay, Abdullah, I think that the, um, what you've um, been telling us now is very costly. Whereas the roofs that you're planting or you're working on are basically uh, average standard or less than average standard roofs. How do you um, compromise the cost with what you're doing? We try as much, since rooftop gardening is somehow f for the context of Egypt is a new idea, we try as much as we can to, um, to work on utilizing local materials. And utilizing medium technology, we don't want to go very much into high technology because of the cost issue. So we try as much as but possible. You can go to high technology. Definitely, There's definitely. No the, the higher the technology is. And you have the know-how. Of course, okay, that's yes. most important. Exactly. But if we want to spread this idea among uh, 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 an income, uh, a strata that really requires to be uh, patient with, so I guess you have to start with systems that are not very costly. 
And in this case, we, uh, we try as much as possible to use materials that are available in the local market. And the idea of reusing and recycling, this is something that, um, that the world right now is looking at as a very uh, resource efficient idea. So instead of uh, throwing the plastic tins that we have and the tires, the old tires that we have, we can recycle it and we can reuse it as planters. So this idea decreases the initial cost of any system and at the same time it is more environmental friendly. How did you get the idea? Sure. Uh, the, the idea of uh, rooftop planting, yes. you mean? Um, actually, as I told you, I was doing uh, research with uh, during my master's in Germany. And um, part of it was to work on providing Mbaba, which is a very good, uh, very well-known neighborhood in, in Cairo, with green spaces and open spaces. And I didn't have the idea of planting the roofs. I was planning to go and walk through the streets and find spaces that can be uh, green. Unfortunately, I couldn't find uh, spaces, and that's when I thought that, okay, let's move those spaces on the roof. And that's when the idea started. Fantastic. So, Abdullah, uh, are there countries that have a, a real inspiring experience in this uh, area? I mean, roof planting, and if so, which countries are they? And uh... Actually, uh, this idea is, uh, is not new for, for the Western world. Uh, USA, they are pioneers in the idea of rooftop gardening. Um, I've visited lots of rooftop gardens for different purposes. So they use rooftop gardens as a social space to gather people and have events. Uh, they use rooftop gardens for food production uh, on a household scale. And they use it also for commercial production. So there are now, um, in, in some cities and states in the, in the US, you can find um, roofs that produces uh, food inside the city for commercial production and wow. we sell it. Wow. So the Cities idea is like what? Uh, I mean. Like uh, New York, for example, mm. uh, you can find lots of ideas there, f uh, lots of rooftop gardens there that uh, produces leafy crops uh, and sell it within the market. And the idea, of course, is also to engage the people. So if I, um, if I am in this state and I'm living in the city, I can go and visit this rooftop garden. So I create a connection between the people and the food. So uh, the normal cycle of food is that people usually they don't uh, know where their food were planted. So they, uh, they just go and pick it from the supermarket. But this new concept uh, allow people to visit rooftop gardens and see the process of planting. And this create a connection between people and food and they can also understand the time taken and the effort taken for food production. So the idea in, uh, in the US is, is expanding a lot. Uh, there are some initiatives in Europe as well, but uh, the U.S. are uh, the pioneers in this. Abdallah, don't uh, does roof uh, planting need a special training, which from my own uh, perspective is very costly? Um, yes, it requires, of course, training because you're not planting on the ground. You're planting on a uh, raised up system that requires intervention and requires uh, daily operations and maintenance. But to make it clear, it's not very complicated. We have trained lots of people. Of course, part of the sustainability of such interventions is to make sure that the training, uh, the people are well trained on how to maintain such system. You don't want to implement systems that people don't understand how it works, and then you leave them. Of course, it will not be uh, properly sustained. Uh, so the idea is to create um, teams of people who understand the knowledge and uh, train them on how to utilize those systems and present uh, those kind of ideas. We as Urban Greens Egypt to provide th this type of uh, capacity development so we try whenever we implement a system to train the people who are working with those systems so that we make sure that planting goes continues without uh, stopping. You know as fantastic as the idea is I mean it is a fantastic idea but um, the first thing I guess that would come to, to the minds of many um, is logically, how would it affect the, the safety of the building itself? I mean, you know, the foundation, the, the columns, the oil, I mean, how would it affect, so how is this process? I mean, and maybe this is why you said there are some roofs where we can plant and other roofs that where we can't. But if you proceed with the process for years and years, maybe you will eventually affect, I don't know, the foundation of a, of a certain building. I agree with you. Uh, I think that's why we do this checklist that I've mentioned uh, before. So we, we want to make sure that the roof is technically ready. 
this kind of uh, so as I told you we check the load bearing capacity of the of the roof and as you as you have know that the urban context of Cairo most of our even the informal areas are concrete based houses they are not even huts where you cannot put loads but this is a good point and the, the roofs are flat this is something uh, that we can um, put potentially work on um, of course daily operations is required so that you make sure that uh, the roof uh, doesn't uh, have any kind of leaks in the system and the water uh, uh, drops on the floor and uh, compromises the, the safety of the roof but generally we we try as much as possible to focus on the new strategy of uh, soilless agriculture with of soilless agriculture so it's agriculture without soil and what, what they call hydroponics Hydroponics is the idea of not utilizing soil, utilizing only water and nutrients to grow plants. And that's what we try to focus on. The good benefit of these systems is that they are very light in weight and um, they don't compromise the, uh, the, the roof uh, uh, structure. And at the same time, it recycles the water, so it adds to the water efficiency uh, point. So uh, we try to train people on how to utilize such uh, hydroponic systems so that when we have an issue with the roof, the roof is not very well established, then in this case we can provide those people with those types of systems uh, that are light in weight and that can easy to maintain and handle. And in this case, the roof can uh, can work. So there is different different options and different opportunities. Abdullah Tawfiq, um, Roof Planting Initiative. Uh, you still have a question, Rana. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Abdullah, I just wanted uh, to ask you if uh, this... Um, with your your initiative of course would really make better the quality of um, the life of people of our people that's a very important question um, i think yes uh, green roofs is a multi-beneficial uh, strategy so it can impact different sectors and different uh, uh, issues and challenges that we're facing nowadays green roofs can provide your roof with an aesthetically pleasing view so uh, it can increase the value of your house and your uh, building uh, it can also decreases the the amount of pollution that you have that plants absorb the, the pollutants and it can uh, purify the air so this is an environmental benefit it decreases the urban heat island effect the the very high temperatures that we face uh, during uh, summers and uh, compared to to the areas in the in the village for example um, also, it provides us with an idea of connecting um, planting with food production. And this idea uh, can impact a lot the, 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 the context of the Egyptian uh, urban fabric. So we want to connect food production, uh, green roofs with food production, so that it can um, positively impact the people. It can decrease their food expenditures. Uh, it can allow them using intensive systems to uh, produce uh, more than they need and sell it so that they can gain income. So the idea of green roofs can be connected to different challenging uh, uh, aspects that we're living in uh, nowadays. What do you benefit from such a project? Um, it's, uh, it's something that I really believe in. So I'm a personal believer in the importance of green roofs and uh, urban gardening. Um, I have a company, an established company, so I, uh, I, I have an arm for uh, community development, so I try to as much as possible to uh, um, be in touch with any entity who wants to implement those projects on a community development uh, um, uh, field. And at the same time, I work in consultancy, so whoever is interested to implement this on different scales, on in different uh, social and economic strata, I can provide them with this kind of consultancy. You never thought of targeting the A class? Of course, we do. We provide different types of systems with different costs. So if there is a, a... So it's an option. Of course. So if I'm planning to go, for example, for an informal area to plant, I will definitely use less materials, uh, cheaper materials, so that people can uh, easily afford it, compared to the A-class, for example, who wants to have uh, a more aesthetically pleasing rooftop garden with uh, high-tech systems. So I can uh, provide those systems to different types of uh, people. Abdullah, where did you graduate from? Uh, I'm an architect, so I graduated from Cairo University. And uh, I traveled to Germany uh, to do my master's. And my master's was in uh, resource efficiency in architecture. How and old are you? Sorry, I'm, uh, I'm 36.
Yeah, you don't look it. I mean, yeah. he, he looks, looks younger. Like you I know. climb lots of roofs, I so I'm doing lots of sports. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cairo University, Rana, not from, not far from here. Yeah, I just know. Just to walk from here, from the Orman Garden. Fantastic uh, initiative. Uh, good luck, uh, Abdullah Tawfi. Uh, uh, great ideas and uh, good luck uh, with the uh, implementations. Great, fantastic. Good luck. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, Abdullah, so thank much you. for joining thank us you. in today's thank episode you. of Land Cruise. It was our pleasure, and thank you. We wish you best of luck, and, and of course, we wish you all success because your idea is very different, and it's a great initiative for our country. And finding calibers like you in Egypt with your young youth is a wonderful. Um, it w makes us always proud. Thank you so much, Abdullah. Thank you. Thank Dear you. viewers, you're still watching Land Cruise on TV. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.